thank you Advancement Courses for sponsoring today's show. Stay tuned for how to save 20% on online professional development. This week for Valentine's Week, we're celebrating how we love teaching, we love kids, and having the heart to do the job. So I really hope this week will be an encouraging, uplifting week for you and help you just have the energy and the hope to move forward because we all need that and we all need to remember just how important we are. So today we have a special episode for 436, Revealing the Heart to Break Through to the Unreachable Student. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we're talking with Basil Moran. And Basil, back in 2017, in season two of the show, you had one of the top five shows of that season of five ways to help at-risk students. And so much has happened. I know now you're an assistant principal, you're traveling the country, you've traveled all over the place talking about reaching these students. So today you're going to talk about reaching the unreachable student. Where do we start? So we look at how do, how do we reach students, right? And so that, I've made that into a word of an acronym. And so when we look at reaching the unreachable, we start with the word R, and that is relationships. Relationships is the foundation of what we do as educators. And so to understand that content pedagogy is not enough to reach all students, that is very reassuring for us and understanding that we must know our students on a personal level. So two quotes that I love is no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. And students do not care how much you know so they know how much you care. So I think as educators, we have to get back to the basics, which is relationships with our students and helping them understand that they do matter um, in and outside of the classroom. Yes. And as I always say, relate before you educate. That's just kind of the order that it goes. Okay. So what's your next part of that acronym for REACH? I would say it's student efficacy. So a lot of students who are at risk have a low self-efficacy about themselves. And typically, low self-efficacy will kind of spell out into behaviors and them not wanting to be motivated for school. So a lot of times the grades will, will have a bad correlation. They'll skip school a lot. And so a lot of times as ed- educators, we have to pick up on those things, understand that we have to be an advocate for these kids. And so showing them and helping them understand through academics, through sports that I believe in you at school, we have to tap into that motivation which is the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Once I feel safe as a student, once I feel cared about as a student, I will then start showing better behaviors at school. So that self-efficacy is huge for educators. And until you understand the social emotional concept of that in the classroom, you'll be behind as as a teacher as well. So how do we tap into that and motivate our students intrinsically and extrinsically? Yeah. Oh, and intrinsic motivation is so, so much what we're trying to get to. Okay. So what's the next letter A? So A would be for the, the attitude. So sometimes these students will have the worst attitude in the world. So we have to look, tap into understanding that because of this attitude, how do we tap into a growth mindset and be able to help these students to understand that with time, with dedication, with better per- perseverance, we can overcome a lot of these academic deficiencies. So again, if I'll use one as math. If we have students who struggle with math, staying after school, doing some tutoring, finding a way to do scavenger hunts in the classroom that make math come alive. But with that growth mindset, we, we give kids a different tool, a different mindset to work out of. A lot of times they will come to you with the with the fixed mindset and again, the worst attitudes. But if we tap into a small three little word I call yet, we, we don't, I don't understand this, this math yet, but in time you will understand it. That three little word can be life changing. And so how do we help our kids to understand that with the right mindset, with the right attitude, anything can be possible. Love that. And I actually interviewed a teacher Sometime back who they had a yet board and all the kids listed all the things that they weren't good at yet, but they really wanted to learn. And that really does help with that metacognitive growth mindset. Okay, so what's our C for? So the C is every uh, student needs a, deserves a champion. So I tell my teachers all the time, if you for to be a champion, think about a world class athlete. They are putting the work in before the game, after the game, and during the game. So as a world class teacher, you have to do the same thing. You have to put the work in before school, after school, and during school. So I, I love the work of Dr. Rita Pearson, and she says that every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists they become the best they can possibly be. I 
could possibly be. So again, it's being a champion for students. How do we become that advocate? How do we make sure that they be the best that they can be? And I think about someone who was a champion for me. I think about Miss Kathy Sankson, and she was my champion in ninth grade. And people had given up on me and told me I wouldn't be able to do it in school. Don't ever find a job where you need to read and write because I had deficiencies in literacy. And she was a, my English teacher. She kind of looked past all of my defaults, all of my all of my flaws, and said, "Basil, you can do whatever you can want to do. We have to work together to make that happen." And I had been in remedial reading and writing classes my whole life, and so from her class, I was then able to go to an actual regular English classroom. And she was that champion for me. She let me know that whatever I put my mind to and working together, I can do that. And I've kept that tenacity and that mindset all throughout my different degrees. Um, again, I'll be presenting in March at ASCD Empower 19, and she will be there. And that that is so inspiring to me to know that we've kept that strong connection for so long. So find a champion, be a champion for a student as a teacher. And Basil, she had high expectations of you. I mean, that's some research that that is out there about, you know, kids who are at risk don't need lower expectations. They actually need high expectations, don't they? Absolutely. That, that is, that's the paramount of understanding how do we help these students. The expectation must be strong. I mean, I think about Manny Scott. He says that we hold our students to a high regard <laughs> despite what we see. And so understanding that, that students want structure. They want to be able to know that you care and I'm going to hold you accountable, but I'm going to do it with love. And, and kids in love is, is colorblind. They don't see color, whether you're black, white. It doesn't matter. Do I love, do I love you as a person? And so that high regard, like you said, is very true. Yes. And love is not a four letter word. It is something that, you know, the appropriate kind of love. There's all different kinds of love and we want to have that. Okay, so what is the H for, Basil? The H is giving these students hope of success. And, and we have to be careful how we speak to these students. We have to be careful how we address average students because that hope is everything. So I think back to when I was summer school principal this past summer, I had a student who had not quite made the regular graduation date um, of, of June 2018. And so now we're in summer school trying to get to the last steps that he needed. And so I remember asking him, like, what do you need, um, son, to get past this, this last step? And he said, do you believe in me? Do you think I can do it. And I said, absolutely. I believe that you can graduate. We both can get you there, but you have to believe it before you can achieve it. And he, he started to cry. And he said, I'll be the first grandson of my family to graduate from high school. He said, I'm a, I don't know if I can do it. I said, we can get it done. So that word, that word hope is a powerful word and it can change someone's life. It, it can help them, help them to unlock some things that are deep within. And we have to understand as a quote that I love that education breed, breeds confidence, confidence breeds hope and hope breeds breeds peace. So how do we help these students to have peace that they can they can achieve what they put their mind to and giving them hope is what they need. How can they be successful in what they put their mind towards? Basil, you know how it is when you give all your effort to reach unreachable students, it can wear on you. Will you speak to the educators driving in the car, or doing their dishes or in their classroom who have those unreachable students and they want to reach those kids with all of their heart and they are just exhausted? What do you say? Absolutely. So to that teacher out there, th this is what I say. I say, don't give up because remember that I was one of those students who I felt like society had given up on. I had been suspended in and out of school. Even the way teachers spoke to me, I had a guys counselor that I went into in high school saying I wanted to go to college. She told me even then I can get a job at Burger King. Understand that it's the way we love on these kids, the way we give them what we give them. That student, I promise you, that starfish inside your classroom who you just felt like you have the most adverse relationship with, that Starfish will come back to you and say, thank you for giving me a chance. Thank you for throwing me back, back into the ocean and not letting me rot on this beach. Thank you for being hard on me. Thank you for being the parent figure that I needed because I trusted you more than my own parents at home. Thank you for helping me understand that I mattered. And those kids need you. And I want to be clear, when I had my, my my favorite teacher, she might not have been my favorite teacher at the time I had her. It wasn't until afterwards I realized that, wow, I really mattered to her. And, she, and because she was so hard on me, that's what made me be who I am today. So understand that these kids need us. If we don't do this work, who else is doing it for them? So please don't give up on these kids. Help them understand that they matter. And again, whatever dream that they have, we must be there to guide them through that dream. Anybody who's been successful in the world came through a teacher. It might be the next president in your classroom, the next mayor. It could be someone who's elected official on uh, for Department of Education. It doesn't matter. You might have that next Olympian in your classroom. 
when you talk to these kids, talk to them with love and be able to give them what they need to be successful because we are advocates for these kids to have an equitable education. So please continue this work and understand that you matter as a teacher and you, you've been called to this, this, this educational field for a reason. Yes, educator, you matter. I can't say it any better, Basil. I do hope that you'll follow him. He is uh, speaking more and more, obviously, and has an incredible message for all of us. We have to persist. We cannot give up. Thanks, Basil. Start off the new year strong by planning your professional development with Advancement Courses. They offer over 200 online graduate level PD courses in 19 different subject areas for K-12 teachers just like us. And because they're online and self-paced, you can take them anywhere and anytime with up to six months to complete. The courses are available for graduate credit through CAEP and regionally accredited university partners or for continuing education units that meet your state requirements. They're a terrific way to get your PD done and the courses really focus on creating practical products that you can use in your classroom the next day. Right now, my listeners and blog readers can save 20% off each course with the code COOL20. That's just $120 per graduate credit hour or $160 for 50 clock hours. So go to advancementcourses.com forward slash coolcat and learn more and use the coupon code COOL20. Never stop learning. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.